Welcome back everyone to Racing Reviews. Welcome back to another episode of our Formula One 2020 team debriefs. We've got four to go. Four teams, two at the front and two a little bit further back on our 2020 grid. So I'll tell you what, the next four days we'll get it done. Done and dusted in time for February and then we can crack on with Formula One 2021 content. So as always, if you are new, feel free to subscribe. I hope you enjoyed today's video, but let's crack on with our next team in our debrief series. It's Williams, the team that finished dead last in the Formula One 2020 standings, the only team that didn't score a single point over the course of the 2020 season. However, 2020 was a huge year for change for the Williams team. Perhaps the biggest year of change in the team's history with Sir Frank Williams and Claire Williams leaving the team at the Monza Italian Grand Prix. Dorilton Capital taking over and trying their best to start a new revolution, bringing Williams back to the front. Over the last couple of weeks, the big news that they have signed a deal with Mercedes, a technical partnership that will start in 2022, and Jensen Button will return to the team in a senior advisory role behind the scenes at Grove. But more importantly, today we're focusing on the on-track, the good stuff, the car, the drivers, the season. The car wasn't great, and we assumed that was going to be the case all the way back in February, almost a year ago now, at that winter testing period. First up, they made it to testing. Already a positive over 2019. Russell building off that incredible debut season. Didn't score points. That would be his target for 2020. Latifi, a brand new rookie. The only rookie that would do the entire year in 2020. What kind of performances could he do up against George Russell? And could he steal a point in his first year of Formula One? And you know what? They didn't half get close. Three 11th place finishes over the course of the season. Just one more DNF in any of those Grand Prix. And points could have been there. George Russell failing to secure points at the Imola Grand Prix after spinning out behind the safety car. Opportunities were there. On pace though, on paper, certainly that car was nowhere near the points and actually the team found themselves once again in 2020 in that back group, but certainly closer to the likes of Haas and Alfa Romeo with Williams on their day being able to beat all four drivers from those two teams and almost, almost, almost challenging people a little bit further up the grid if their car was in the right place at the right time. So it's safe to say... A year of improvement, definitely a big step forward for the team, but still nowhere near where they want to be. They will know that 2022 has to be their year. 2021, maybe they'll be able to get a couple of points, jump in front of Haas, maybe Alfa Romeo, but 2022, all eyes on the prize. But there's no denying 2020 for the first time, probably since 2014, the team went forward instead of backwards even though the points don't suggest that. And as such, as we move over to our famous tier list from this debrief series, it's really hard to place Williams. Certainly nowhere near legendary or great seasons. We've got Mercedes, McLaren and Alfa Tauri in those high spots. Was it a good year for Williams? No points? Still at the back of the field? I, I don't think so. Average? Again, maybe if you compare it to the last couple of years, but this is Williams. This is a team that want to be near the front, have an incredible history in Formula One, and actually, I think at the end of the year, had a better car than Haas, a car that could really challenge the Alfa Romeos, but at the end of the day, a dead last. Have worse points than last year, it's gotta be bad. And I feel bad for doing that, because again, it's been a year of improvement, but on paper, where it counts, a step backwards. Maybe average would have been, no, I think bad. Williams need to focus on moving forward. They've made some great steps, a big time of change for them. But I think in a couple of years time, when we look at 2020, we'll say, yeah, that was a bad season. That was not Williams. They shouldn't be behind the likes of Alpha Tauri even. So yeah, I'll go with bad, maybe average at a push, but I'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Right, 
Shall we talk about our drivers? First up, our head-to-head -head for our two mainstays of the team in 2020, George Russell and Nicholas Latifi. And straight away, you can see it's a little bit one-sided. 16-0 in the qualifying battle, 15.5 to 18.9 already looks insane. That George Russell got an average 15.5, that does not, does not include that second place with Mercedes. That is how good George Russell was on Saturday in 2020. Race head to head, Latifi brings it back a little bit. 10-6 though in Russell's favour. No points for either drivers at Williams. Again, all of the Mercedes stats we spoke about in our Mercedes video a few weeks ago. Best qualifying, 12th for George Russell, 15th for Nicholas, both coming at the Hungarian Grand Prix. And a best race finish of 11th for both drivers, so close to points, but weren't quite able to get any. For George, a year of improvement. Very much on a similar wavelength to the team, not the points he was looking for. On paper, that's what he came into this season. That was the objective. They didn't achieve it. But certainly, racecraft was much, much better. Qualifying still just continues to be absolutely insane. Still unbeaten at that Williams team in qualifying head-to-head, -head, though he did lose out to Bottas at the Sakia Grand Prix. That opportunity, though, at Mercedes... I feel was needed this year. Not because George was having a bad season, certainly not, far from it. But I think for those that maybe casually watch Formula One, maybe they see the results. Oh, he's in a Williams, he's not that good. I think it reminded a lot of people, especially those who had never seen him in Formula Two, put him in the limelight. This is George Russell. This is what he can do. Because otherwise, all people get to see is that incident in Imola where he binned it under the safety car. That battle with Alex Albon and Lando Norris in Sochi, great though it was, Russell came out the worst because he was in a Williams. So that drive for Mercedes, I think, has done wonders for the career of George Russell. And look already, how many people are begging him to sign for Mercedes. And I've got to agree. And his time at Williams in 2020 wasn't that bad either. For Nicholas Latifi, I don't think he was that bad. I think there's a lot of criticism for why he's got that seat in Formula One. The financial backing he brings to a team like Williams is, of course, crucial. But there's always going to be that question mark whether he truly deserves it, whether that pace is generally there. And for me, I think Nicholas Latifi was one of the bigger surprises in 2020. Qualifying, he really struggled. That's going to be a big point of action for him to improve upon going into 2021. But race pace was quite good and actually on several occasions across last season was able to not only battle with George Russell but he was able to fight the two Haas cars, was able to fight with the likes of Raikkonen, Giovinazzi, Danny Kvyat as well in Portugal and for a man who came into this year with almost no Formula 1 experience, less testing than ever in a pre-season period in a season where we had no idea which race we were going to next, how long the calendar was going to be, credit where credit's due for Nicholas Latifi. But yes, there is work to do if he wants to stay with the team in 2022 and beyond, especially now Mercedes are starting to rebuild their junior programme and maybe with that deal coming in, in the next couple of years, they'll want to put another one of their drivers in that seat. But that's certainly a topic for another day. And the final driver at Williams this year was Jack Aitken, taking the place of George Russell at the Sakia Grand Prix. And I think it's fair to say, a solid debut. Great in qualifying, right there with his teammate in the race. Did have that moment, did hit the barriers. However, with very, very, very little running in that car all season long, to be almost identical with Latifi on pace, after a difficult year in Formula 2, it's got to be said for Aiken as well, I think he's certainly on the radar of Williams for the future. And I think he did himself a lot of good over the course of that weekend. So big thumbs up for the Jack Aiken team for that weekend in Sakia. But before we go, it's time for our driver tier list. So far, 
We've got Perez, Hamilton, and Mercedes George Russell in legendary. Gasly, the Hulk, and Danny Rick in great. The two McLarens, Stroll, the two Alphas in good. And Kvyat, Bottas, Ocon all in average. Our worst ratings so far. And I can tell you, for the Williams boys, I have gone with this. Yes, average for Latifi, average for Aitken. I don't want to be too crazy. Solid performances this year. Room for improvement, but weren't too bad either. For George Russell, I've gone with good. I've put him in legendary for Mercedes because I do think that is a drive that will go down in Formula 1 history. For Williams this year, improvements. Still didn't get those points. And I don't feel comfortable putting him in front of the likes of Sainz of Norris. But at the end, I will do a full reshuffle of this entire mess of a tier list and put them all in an order that I feel suits them best. So I think Russell will be in front of the two Alphas, in front of Lance Stroll, but right there with the two McLaren boys. But as always, I would love to know your thoughts in the comments section down below. Thank you all for being really patient over this last week or so. It's been very, very busy here with one thing or another. I really do appreciate it. We've got some awesome, awesome content on the way over the next few weeks and heading into 2021. I cannot wait. Hopefully you all enjoy. But for now, for today, thank you all very much for watching and I hope to see you all in the next one.